Hey, okay, welcome back to the Caribou Daily Science Channel. This is a uh, unofficial live stream of many stream on on on, on YouTube uh, Monday and Wednesday. But anyway, I'm doing this as a as a title suggests I, I received a request from someone who's watched some of my cyclistic bike share radio uh, videos. Let's see. But first of all, as we come on almost a nightly ritual, we we need to take care of a uh, of a uh, of a copyright claim. Okay. And you can see here, this this is the same movie over and over again, okay? The same video over and over again. And, uh, and these videos actually come from, well, they actually come from uh, uh, Facebook uh, uh, Facebook's business site, okay? So I actually started to make go to trouble actually making a, a permanent document. So the one, the one in question again is, Adora. Oh, that's a new one. Hmm. Huh. Wow. Okay. At least, at least the guy, at least this person is gets required to monetize the video. Well, no, because I, I might, be, I'm gonna make a stab at this. Is that this uh, video is already there? Okay. Hey, no problem, uh, uh, Chow. Uh, thanks for stop. Thanks for taking time stopping out. So, so where in the world are you located at? What I'm doing now, I'm, I'm doing what's pretty much a nightly ritual for me. That is, uh, that is, you know, take care of a of a of, of a supposedly a copyright issue with the song I play on the background song collection well, all, all the songs on my playlist come from the business site for Facebook okay and they're, and they're all freely available well here it is right here as a matter of fact at least, at least this person's getting a little bit you know more inventive now because I, I, I get the I get these these videos here all the time okay all the time Oh, there it is up there. Never mind. Never mind. So uh, I, I, I send uh, uh, YouTube this information, and then, then the guy and the person said, oh, then the person withdraws the claims, okay? And, and you would think at some, you, you would think that Facebook would be, or YouTube would be more concerned with protecting their, their, uh, their uh, their content creators from false claims, I guess. So you come down here. You're in Florida. Okay, very good. Oh, okay, sure. Uh, so I'll just put this in here. Okay. When you come down here, check these. I mean, you you would think at some point, you know, a flag would go, go off at uh, at uh, at Facebook, at, at YouTube, and they say, "Oh, wait a minute, this is the same guy filing the same song, press same song to the same person every single time." Okay, so you just graduated from, so you, did, did, did you mean you just got your, your bachelor's degree? So that takes care of the business for tonight. 
All right. And let's come back over here to your question. Okay, so the first thing, here we go. Yeah, the first thing you have to notice, this is DuckDB, all right? DuckDB uh, is, is an, it's designed for data analytic work. It, it's got some really interesting features. It like, has a median function, has functions, it has a histogram function, and has also has uh, uh, a percentile or quantile function also. Uh, and it, it, uh, you can also do quantiles as part of window functions, but with, with, the, with the DuckDB version, you do, it's, it's just, just like, use it like any other, uh, like any other function. So, so what, what, was your, uh, what was your bachelor's in? Okay, now, uh, <laughs> by the way, I've been, I've been looking at free BSD also the last couple of days. <laughs> uh, so anyway, so your question was about, uh, now if, 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 you, if, if, you, if you also, if you, look, if you look at the cyclistic bike share data set, there's also a couple of videos that had to do with SQLite, and also a couple of videos that had to do with BigQuery, all right? Uh, anyway, you know, uh, DuckDB is really interesting. I really like it a lot because of all the extra building functions, but the thing is, it, 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 it hasn't reached version one yet, so it's still being it's still being developed, and uh, for the most part, it's stable. We we'll have any type of stability issues, but what can happen is it, the next version they may release may not work with with uh, with a database created with eight point one zero zero point eight point one. Okay, that's that's a problem, and, and and you also can't access it through anything else because if you if you use something like SQLite or or a SQL Server, or uh, or Postgres, you you can actually access those and say uh, Power BI and Excel, okay. Uh, yeah, but but if you're looking for a quick and dirty database, it doesn't have doesn't have any security like that. You know, you know SQLite's probably a good place to start. Uh, so as part of your degree program, what what tools did you use? So what what are you what are you using to try to create your dashboard with? Yeah, because the, you know you you could uh, the thing about uh, DuckDB is it, it runs on uh, well it, it runs on both uh, Linux and it runs on it runs on a lot of things. It runs on Linux. It runs on on FreeBSD also. Uh, and you can also use a program called DBeaver to access. Of course, DBeaver is also going to be used to access other databases like SQL Server and Postgres and SQLite and stuff like that. Okay, what what da what database are you using? Yeah. That, that, okay, my SQL. Yeah, I, I, I don't think the I don't think the free version of Tabula has database access. That's that's the problem. Okay. 
uh, the free version of Power BI and the and Excel has has database connectivity built into it, including ODBC connectivity. Okay, let's take a look at Power BI here. Power BI desktop. Yeah, but uh, like I said, you you can't you can't access a database directly from from the as far as I can tell as from the from the free version of uh, of uh, Tabula. Now, <laughs> what you could do is, <laughs> uh, let me think about this for a second. What could you do? Um, Obviously, the easiest thing to do would be to switch to Power BI or Excel. Okay. <laughs> so let's just take a look here real quick at SQL Server. Or, yeah. So this is this is my server name.
And if I come over here now, say to Power BI, load anything else. Well, look at this. <laughs> we got a Microsoft Fabric preview. Oh, man. That's interesting. SQL Server, Connect. Okay, so here's all the uh, the uh, the ones with a little the ones with a little like table symbol. These are these are actually database tables. Okay, and the ones up here are the uh, are tables or are, are views. Okay, so we can come down here. We can import all these things we want to here. All right. Now this side here, Tech on the Net, is a really good database site. You can see it has example codes and, and functions for uh, for all these different databases here. Okay, so let me give you that. So you want to bookmark that you want to bookmark that because it's a really quick it's a really good quick reference for databases and of course and of course you know uh, you know things like chat gbt and, and uh, bing and uh, and uh, bard are all are also really good tools for for sql okay now we can come over here if you wanted to now now we can come over here and we can set up our joints okay Now, yeah, and what happened here, because in the database itself, I had the primary and the foreign key set up, it automatically recognized the, uh, it automatically recognized the, uh, the join, all right? So then, then you can come over here very simply, say, do a, a bar chart. All right. Y axis. Okay, and so very, very quickly, I, I got a chart. But like like I said a minute ago, you you can connect to a MySQL database or a Mariah database from inside of uh, from inside of Power BI. Okay.
Okay. Now we got now we got two quick charts. You got uh, the, the number of movies by director and the number of movies by genre. And come up here, click this, and you can see uh, Alfred Hitchcock only had uh, mostly murder, murder was mysteries. All right. And we could say, uh, so you can see it's, 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 it's very easy to work with databases in both Power BI and Excel. I mean, if you, if you really want to use Tabby, what you, what you, what you could do is, uh, <laughs> I mean, you could do one of two things. You, you, you could either, like, you know, write the queries in, in MySQL and then export the data in the CBS file, or, into, or, or, or you can, you could, or, you know, or you can, you can put it into a, you can, you can either export it as a CSV file, or you can take and you can, you can import it into an Excel database, okay? And then, and then connect the tab with the Excel database, which is very simple. Let's come back over here, do a connection, database. Oops. No, you, you could of course, you know, and create your entire you could create your dashboard in Excel as far as that goes. Let's see. Okay, now apparently uh Excel's a little different. Well only only lets you import one thing at a time. Do this to load to table. Okay. Come back over here. So we got them movies, and then we got the fact that it. Oh, the other thing, the other thing about uh, about uh, about uh, you know, terribly, you can also access Google spread, uh, Google Sheets, okay. Which I, I did once. I I I I, I uh, use uh, at one point I, I used Google Sheets to to import stock data daily. Then I connected that to to another tool. So every day when I run it, it would go on and update the Google Sheet.
Okay, so let's call this documents. Oh, let's put it in here, I guess. Hmm. I wonder where that title came from. <laughs> That's sort of interesting, Excel. All right, tabula. And, uh, and also, huh? I also established the uh, the length force there also. So now I come over here again. Uh, let's see. Let's say director columns rows and director. Okay. And so we did the same thing. All right. We we did we did basically the same thing. Let's do some more interesting gross. Let's take a look at gross. Let's see, let's see which director has the highest average gross. Measure sum average. Oh, I don't know. Does, does it use JSON? Well, there it is. Well, it, it'd probably just be the same thing. And you, you just have to, have to import a JSON file of some type, which I don't have any. Let's see. I mean the way the, the way you would you the way you would import it's going to be the same the same thing, okay? Let's go over here.
No, you can't do it directly. And that, unless you got the paid version of Tabula. You, 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 the, like I said, the only way you can do it uh, in the free version of Tabula will be to import the data as I just did in, in Excel. Okay? And then do connect to the Excel file. Are, are you using the free version of Tabula? Of course, the first thing is you have to have valid, uh, the first problem is you have to have valid JSON data. <laughs> uh, let's see. There. Yeah. Which I don't. But anyway, yeah, you, you would just take your JSON file and port it directly into Tabula, okay? Yeah, but like I said a minute ago, uh, remember that all these here, all these over here, right? This was all this was remember this is all imported from an Excel file. I connected the uh, the SQL Server database to an Excel file. Then I connected Tabula to the to the Excel Excel data sheet. Okay, and like I said, also you can also connect it to a Google to a, to a to a Google sheet online. Okay, but that's that's pretty much you know like I say unless unless you buy the, unless you buy the uh, the commercial version of Tabula. Uh, let me take a look at something. Do you, do you know about Tabula Public? Have you ever seen it before? Like I said, of course. Then again, you you could just you could just create the whole dashboard in, in Excel if you wanted to. Let's see. I forgot my password.
man. Let's go to this end. <laughs> mm, you are talking about okay. Uh, if you try to load the power crew, remember that, uh, if you, are you talking about, uh, oh, first of all, thanks so much for stopping by, uh, 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 TM production. I appreciate you taking time off from your evening to stop by and say hi. Uh, let's see. So are you, uh, the data is, is well, remember our, our loads all the data into memory. So you have to have enough memory to load. Uh, I, uh, first of all, are you talking about the cyclistic bike share data also? Yeah, you know, it all comes down to memory. Uh, you say, yes, well, what what database are you trying to load it into? Okay. Um, you can you can load it into R fairly easy. Uh, yeah, that's 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 probably a memory problem. You're probably running out of memory. So how, how much memory do you guys have on your computer? Yeah, so the question again is how much memory do you have in your computer? Anyway, this, this is what's called tabula, uh, tabula uh, public. And it's, a pl and it's a place where you, you, you can post your tabular data frames to, 8 gigabytes. Hmm. I'm not sure I can load it to 8 gigabytes when I, before, because I, I went from, no, I went from 16 to, yeah, because, well, how, how big is, how much, how big is that data? Yeah, if it's crashing, it's probably a memory problem. Yeah, so the data, the CSV files is, is right around a gigabyte, okay? But, re, but remember that uh, that uh, R does everything in memory, okay? But the, the, the way I, the, the, one way I did it using, using uh, SQLite is very easy to import the data in. I don't know, let's see something here. Documents. Hmm. 
actually this is our file, right? So I'm gonna create a Yeah, and all, you, and all you have to do with uh, SQLite is this. Come over here, import CSV files. Come over here, select all of these, okay? And import them directly into uh, and import them directly into, C into SQLite that way. Now the other thing you could do is if you want to, if you want to try R, you can come over here. You know you want you want to use R and tidyverse. Okay, that's the first thing. You can come over here. You can say uh, Okay. Yeah, and, and that's the only way to do it. Okay. So you so you, you import them in, in one law and one and one law and one uh in one swoop and you uh you're up and running, okay? Re remember. ChatGPT and Bing and, and Bard are your best friends, okay, are your best friends. Uh, ChatGPT is pretty accurate with SQ, SQL, okay, it's pretty accurate. And it's pretty accurate doing some basic type of uh, R stuff also. I, I would say it's more accurate with R than it is with Python, but it's most accurate with SQL. If you go to my channel, there's a there's a whole there's a whole playlist called Cyclistic or it's called Google Capstone Project, I think it is. Lots of videos there. Of course you can you can also just reach out to me on uh, putting a comment in one of the videos or something like that also. So you see here it is. And here's all your data. All right. That's that's the easiest way to get it into uh, into SQLite. All right. Now <coughs> you can of course connect to different databases from within uh, you know from within from within R and R Studio, right? So you could you could come back over here. And you, which is what I do, import the data into R, do all your data cleaning, your data wrangling, okay, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then write it up to a, a database of some type. The easiest database to work with is SQLite, because it doesn't require any type of, uh, any type of password, uh, password or username or authentication. Uh, it's a single file. Uh, the, the only thing you need to be aware of is that uh, is that uh, is that SQLite doesn't have a date type. Okay, it has text and number type, and that's all it really has. So you so you gotta be careful with looking at that. So when you if you, if you go from SQLite into R or um, or into Excel or Power Query, okay. Um, you got to remember to convert uh, the date columns back to date types, okay? But you, you could you could come over here and you, and you could you know do some more data and you could extract say the year from the, you you could extract say the, the you know the the date from the uh, from the timestamp 
an, an uncreated table that contains a, a number of rides by day. Okay, and stuff like that. You can do that over here. And you know, you know, I would say, you know, the less data you import into <laughs> into say R or Python, the better the better off you're going to be. Uh, Python, I also mentioned, comes comes with uh, SQLite support already built in. All right. If you're going to do it in R, you have to ins you have to install the SQLite library. All right. Now, if if you if you um, If, if you want to use SQLite with, say, either a Power BI or, 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 or Excel, you can download the ODBC driver. Come over here. Okay. Come over to here. Oop, that's not the right. Hang on here, hang on. Come back over here now. For database, other things, ODBC. This doesn't make any difference. Um, all the memory? What? What? Okay. <laughs> that should work. I'm not quite sure why it is, but it thinks I'm out of memory. Okay, but that's that's how you would use a uh, ODBC to to import the data directly into Power BI or, or Excel, okay? So tell me, Chell, how, mu how much memory do you have on your uh, on your system? No, you you can't. A Excel Excel wasn't big enough to you you you. you Well, I've already done that. Just go look at some of the other videos on my on my on my site there. Okay, but anyway, what I will do for you, I'll show you. Some of you may have already tried this, but I'm going to see if I can import the data using Power Query. Now here's here's the thing that's interesting about about Power Query and Excel. See this folder thing here? Hmm. 
transform. Now, you, you cannot import all this data directly into Excel. All right. There's too many rows. There's like four, there's, I don't know, there's about four and a half million rows, okay? You want to get rid of the stuff you don't want. Don't need station ID. And all honesty, you don't need to, you don't need the ending station aid anyway. I don't keep the ending station. Okay. So what can we do here next? Uh, Yeah, so what you, what, you, what you can do is rather than import it directly in, you, you can simply use, a, what, what's it called, a connection? Is that what it's called? Or a view? Which is basically sort of like a window on your side. But what you, if the thing is, uh, let's just try, let's, let's just do a quick count here. Real count. Now, there's about 100,000 rows here that, that's missing station name. Okay, and and and, what, and once you do with that, uh, and the missing numbers is up to you. <laughs> okay, it's your, it's your project. So there's five point seven million rows. All right, come back over here. And this and this same what I'm doing here will also work exactly the same in Power BI, because Power BI also has Power Query into it. Let's say remove, let's say remove empty. Now let's do another count. Now, I've, I've got 32 gigabytes of RAM on this machine. You can see it's taking a few moments for it to count the rows here. Yeah, see, we went we from, what, 5.7 million rows to 4.9 million rows, okay? And what I, what I would do here, I would take this and duplicate the column, say, and come over here, say, transform date only, okay? And I could say start date. Come back over here. Duplicate column again. And we're going to say transform. Oh, I don't know. Let's say hour. So now we got hours. Okay. Come back over here. Now here's the, 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 the columns are too big. See, what you have to do, you have to say uh, connection only. A connection is sort of like a, like a view in a database. The, the data is not actually in this in, in the spreadsheet. It's actually, uh, it's, it's like you're looking through a window, for, better, for lack of a better term. 
Add that to data model for fun of it. There we go. I mean, it, it doesn't make any difference where you do your data cleaning at. You want you do your cleaning, your data cleaning, what you're most comfortable working in, okay? Whether it's R or Python or SQL. It, uh, overall, I would say that well, for what the data data cleaning I did in here was like cleaning up dates and stuff. Yeah, you can do that with uh, like extract functions and, and date part functions and databases and stuff like that. You can of course just do what I did here. <laughs> Okay, this creates some new date columns. Again, you, you could do all your data clean here. You can build. You can do your uh, dashboard here, or you can simply go out and import and import the data directly back into uh, into Tabular or Power BI or something like that. You can see that this is taking a, a a bit time to, to do this. Okay, because there's there's still a lot of data. We could have sat there and we could have uh, created some summary tables in Power Query. We, we, we could have, for instance, counted, counted the rides by day, counted the rides by hour, count the, you know, count the, you know, count the, uh, the rides by the day of the week, and so forth and stuff like that. One thing to keep in mind is if you, if you go and you start calculating trip duration, you're going you're gonna to have trip duration with it, which is less than or equal to zero. You, you, you're going to have you know, trip durations in minutes. It's like it's like it's like 24 hours long or something. Because probably isn't actually correct. Uh, but if if you, if you, if you were to look at the start and end date, most of the rides start and end on the same day. And I, I and again, this this is this is your project. If you if you only want to include rides starting in the same day, hey, that's up to you. Okay, we're getting close. But at one point, I I imported like three, what was it, like 300,000 rows into Power Query. <laughs> Something really crazy like that. I, th I think it was a city bike data set. Maybe 300 million rows. It was, it was some outrageous sum. Of course, my computer basically came to a to a screeching halt as it used up all my resources. But uh so we're getting close here. We're getting close to this being loaded. 